little small. I'm not going to read parts of it because we have kids here, but you can read it to those kids that can't do it. Um, there's these four kids, they can be having fun, they can be learning about how things really are about space, they can be making friends with each other, reading books, playing video games, practicing their talents. So, leave much they can be doing. Instead of closing their minds, throwing their lives away, I'm not angry anymore, I have no stomach to be after this. This is just, this is just seriously sad to me. More than anything I've seen happen to another person in my lifetime, leak this. I'm sorry, that's just what was there. That, so, these are reactions to people. Or, what the people is happening, I'm so glad I'm an atheist. Right. And there are a lot of comments like that. You know what? I'm, so like, I'm glad I'm, I'm Jewish, or I'm glad I'm Muslim and not Christian. Right? And uh, you should not attempt to brainwash innocent children who aren't old enough to make their own decisions yet, and oh yeah, leave God. Uh, I'm a Christian, and this makes me sick. God and Jesus didn't preach more than preached peace and love. This is not at all what he preached. This is so scary. Or the last one is interesting. Instead of crying and lamenting everything and asking for forgiveness, go and live in God's compassion for doing good things, not just stupid good things, like telling mom you love her. I mean, really good things. You know, it's interesting. Um, part of this journey really has, been, has come from um, uh, a book I've been exploring called uh, about the emerging church, the church in this new culture and, and responding to it and trying to cross it with this message of Jesus. And one of the things that many of those in this movement have said is that people outside the church say they like Jesus, but they don't like the church. In fact, I love the, uh, forgive me, I love the bumper sticker that says, God, deliver me from your people. Right? Um, and not that, that I think it's a good bumper sticker, but I think it's pretty straightforward that a lot of people have experience of, you know what? God and Jesus, I really resonate with him, but those people who are following him, they scare me, all right? Um, and, you know, so if we really want to connect, see, it's not about saying, believe this is the right way, I lost that one, I keep that last one in there, but how do we live this out in the world and show people what God is really like? And I think we look at Jesus, Jesus was about being out in the world and connecting with people in that way. This woman caught in the very act of committing adultery. And the law Moses commands us to stone such women. What do you say, teacher? Hey, it's a trap. I was told you preach according to the law of Moses. Do you have an answer, Nazarene? Do you like anyone among you who is without sin? Be the first to cast their stone. I 
Lord's contempt. Thank you more tomorrow. Do you want to come with us? Where? Is it better? Yes. I go where I want. I'm free. You're not free. Did you cook it? Did you come with us? You treated her like... like she was worth something. She is. So are you. <laughs> I know some of us have seen this before, but I think there's some, a good point in this. When we're talking about identifying with Jesus, I want everybody to think, what was Jesus like? I mean, first off, uh, I love the scene because, you know, they're trying to trap him, and then Jesus turns the table, and if you see the face of his disciples, like, yeah, Jesus, you got him.
trying to answer questions that this one raises instead of just letting it be there and let us wrestle with it ourselves. Um, but Jesus comes from Nazareth to be baptized by John. And he goes down to the water and it says that God was there and the Spirit comes down. And there's a scene of it where God speaks, you know, you are my beloved son. Um, you know, um, and next one. And the sky's going, uh, you're my son, chosen to mark by my love, pride of my life. You know, uh, good message for a father on Father's Day, right? And then immediately, the same Spirit pushes Jesus out into the, the wild. Actually, it, it like drives him out there to be with the, the devil and to be tempted. And, and uh, it's such a wrestling with what he's about. And then afterwards, the angels take care of him. So now he's had this experience that's like centered him in his mission. And the first thing he does when he gets out there, next one, the okay, is as soon as John is arrested, Jesus like sees this, it, it's time for him to come out. He starts preaching in the wilderness, preaching the message of God, and he says this. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. The central message of Jesus is about God's kingdom. That God's kingdom is come here. Is he talking about heaven and the hereafter? He's saying right here and now. So the first thing he does after he starts preaching is he goes, it's a, a worship day, it's actually Saturday, which is the Sabbath. He goes to the synagogue, and while he's there, he encounters a demon. Right, now this is very interesting. Where's the first place he meets the demonic? Worship, right? <laughs> right? And already the beginning of Jesus' journey is this, this experience of, you know what, that the structure, people who have structured religion, who have institutionalized it, that often that's where you meet the demonic. And I don't mean to be nasty, but like that first video, we were scared when we watched these people and said, you know, they get so wrapped up in this that it it's almost feels that way, like, you know, that, that there's something really, really wrong here. And so Jesus is in this place of worship, and, and there's this boy possessed by the Spirit, and he casts it out. Everybody's amazed. Now it's a Sabbath, and according to the, the rules, you know, in the Old Testament, you can't, you can only walk so far. So as soon as the sun goes down, which means the day is over, people flock to the house he's at, and and uh, they come to be healed, and he's casting them demons. He's just late into the night, and then even before the sun is up, he gets up and he goes to a mountain to pray. Now the disciples slept in because they are tired. It was a late night, and they wake up and he's gone. They hunt him down because all the people are asking about him. And they find him on this mountain, and they say, we've got to get back down there. Everybody wants you. You know, this is really exciting. You know, we can make money off this, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. They didn't actually say that. But you never know what they were thinking. And Jesus says, you know what? He said, we need to go on because I've come to bring this message, and I need to go with everyone else and share it, share it with them. Right? So there's this real central focus that Jesus is about this message of God's kingdom, and he's got to go where people are at. So he's sitting there saying, you know what, this is the place, we're gathered here, and they need to come here. So we need to go. I think we need to really explore that for us as a movement to say, you know, it's great, like we're here in the school, we've been in the theater, we've been in these other places, and, um, and that's great, but this is this is our Sunday worship. This is, you know, um, a, a place that a lot of those folks outside the church already have their opinions, like in that YouTube video, you know, if you ask them what do you feel about Sunday uh, church folk, what are they going to say? I'm glad I'm an atheist. All right? So, you know, we need to be out there like Jesus was. And there's this great verse, uh, the one after this we go into, uh, into Matthew, that I think especially for pastors is important because I think a lot of times uh, those of us who lead are the ones who kind of get us in the most trouble. And the reason is this. In this passage, Jesus is talking about worrying. He says, you know, stop worrying about where you're going to get your food or how you're going to get your clothes because God is going to take care of all those things. What you need to do, though, is seek God's kingdom first. And all those other things will be taken care of. So, you know, and don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow has enough worries of its own, right? Just seek God's kingdom first. It was interesting in reading this book on the emerging churches, a, a lot of these folks were exploring, what does it mean to start a new church? And they were asking people who started new churches, and what they found out is that the goal, their goal wasn't God's kingdom. It was about making sure they had a salary and benefits. 